So today we're making a knife I designed, the original garden knife. This was a knife I designed after some consultation with a couple of gardeners, some friends of mine, who just wanted a general purpose blade to be able to use around the garden, not necessarily specifically for pruning or anything like that, but just all those little jobs where a blade is really useful. If you'd like to see more videos and continue with knife making and see other designs from what I do, and the work around making knives, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. So we started by cutting out of 1095 3.6mm flat stock and then cleaning up the grind. Now, the bit that I struggled with in terms of the design and actually sort of got finished relatively late was the finger choil. You can just see the back half of it in that picture. It kept coming up way too square and it was just a question of trying to work out how to actually get that right. So using a flat wheel there just to be able to make sure that the shape and the profile was cut out. I started with just a round file to try and get that finger chill, then tried to get the edges sorted out and it just kept being too squared. Even there, that was pointless. Using a little needle file, that wasn't ever going to do anything. I think I gave up at that point, so decided just to refine the profile using that file and making sure that I had some nice rounded corners on the inside of that tang to make sure there was going to be no chance of it breaking or cracking or splitting during the quench. So continue just to refine the shape and make sure I was happy with the profile. Use an angle grinder to be able to cut the initial bevel in. I wanted quite a nice sort of convex shape to the blade. I also don't have a belt grinder. So this made things slightly more straightforward in terms of being able to cut in those initial bevels rather than doing it all by hand. I wanted quite a chunky sort of feel to the knife. So that's why I used that convex shape. So the handle is a wood called Bakota. It's a South American hardwood, part of the rosewood family. I drew up a basic design, worked out how long it needed to be, and then proceeded to start cutting it to size. and then drilled in for my tangs. So it's a 3.6 mil piece of stock. So I used a four mil drill bit just to be able to create five centimeters of tang into the block of wood. I drilled three holes in a straight line and then connected them using a knife maker's brooch, which I also made myself. You can see it sat there on the side. I'm gonna do a video on how I made that soon. I cut the side of the block of wood off just so I had slightly less to have to worry about. I'm actually, turns out I was really glad I did this. The wood had a slight fault in it. And so once I'd cut that off, I don't think I've got footage of it, but when I came back to it the next day, a large part of it had sheared. Now, thankfully, actually the bit that had sheared fitted in perfectly with my design. There's me using the knife brooch and then just knocking the blade into position. And then starting to draw out, I think I realized at this point that my pencil was completely blunt, so I've resharpened it. There you go. And drew out my basic shape. Then just very slightly off screen, I used a coping saw to start to cut out the basic shape for the handle. You can actually see that bit that's come off the side of the handle there, but thankfully that fitted in with the design, like I said using a flat wheel on the angle grinder just to be able to get my handle contoured. I wanted a nice rounded handle that would just fit easily into the hand and be able to be held backwards as well. I'm not sure I actually, in fact I know I didn't get video of me showing how I mean, but essentially I wanted to be able to hold it blade up and blade down nice and comfortably. Once I got the basic shape roughed in, I then started to hand sand with 60 grit just to be able to actually get those edges all refined and start to really sort out the profile of that handle. And using a rasp as well on some of the bigger areas that weren't quite as I wanted it. 
What I realized at this point was actually the diameter of a circle and flat file was almost exactly what I wanted for my finger chore. So I used a metal file just to be able to get the shape on the blade and then I used the rasp on the wood to be able to get that handle and starting to do a hand sand prior to heat treat. So I sanded up to 400. I'm not entirely sure how much benefit there is to hand sanding up to 400 before heat treat. My big decision that I made during working on this knife was realizing that I was always hand sanding in the same direction, which meant that I sometimes found as we were getting towards the end that I still had some tool marks in that I hadn't quite gotten rid of because they were hidden in that same direction polishing. So I did all of my pre-heat treat sanding in the same direction, but corrected that later on. I think I actually only corrected it on one side of the blade, but you'll see that in the video. So there it is as a rough fit up preheat treatment, feeling pretty nice in the hand. That nice big finger choil just to hold it securely. Just wanted to make sure that everything was as finished as it could be prior to heat treat, so made sure that all the flats and all the edges were nicely sorted out. And then heat treat. So I did three normalization cycles in my new forge. If you haven't seen my video on the uh, improved coffee can forge, it's on the channel. Using that little magnet just on the top edge to be able to check the demagnetization temperature. So three rounds of heat treatment. I think this is the third round. I was getting all set up to do a series of quenches on three different blades and here we go with the quench. So it's canola oil, rapeseed oil that I'd heated up to 60 degrees centigrade at 150 degrees Fahrenheit and a nice straightforward quench. Don't know why I waved it around in the oil for quite that long, not sure it needed to be waved around for that long. I then tempered it in the kitchen oven 200 degrees for two hours. So this is starting the hand sand and on this side I just continued with the same direction and went from a 400 grit which actually it cleaned off the carbonization really really well and then just went from 400 up to 2000 grit with wet and dry black ice sandpaper. I then watched a video that talked about this idea of changing direction to be able to prevent those tool marks. So use that on this side. So that's the 400, just making sure that everything's smoothed up. And then you can see doing that other way. And it really does help make sure that you get every 400 scratch out before you then move on to the next one and then get every 600 scratch out when you move on to 800. Yeah, it's quite an interesting way. It does definitely take longer, but I do think you get a much better result in the long run. Some of those scratches were quite stubborn. Not quite sure why I was trying to stab myself in the stomach at that point, but thankfully no injuries were incurred. It's annoying when you watch this video back, I can see scratches in that blade that I would have sworn weren't there at the time, but it's obviously just at this particular angle, they show up more obviously. I think that's a pretty decent finish. Then gluing up the handle, I used G-Flex Epoxy. Because it's a relatively short tang, just wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of flexibility with any potential movements. Hadn't mixed up quite enough the first time around. I was just slightly shy, which annoyed me and then put it in a vise to set overnight. 
then use this sanding wheel just to get that choil completely smooth all the way from the wood onto the metal. It's got a really nice transition. I think off screen, once I'd tempered the blade and polished it, I then did some electro etching. Like I said, I'm gonna do a video on electro etching at some point just to make sure that that's all covered. But I etched my maker's mark onto one side and because this was the very first attempt, I put the first original garden knife onto the other side. This knife was actually a gift from my stepfather who I just wanted to give him a really useful knife for around the garden. I'm hoping that he will use it and not just treat it as a object for special. So got that handle sanded up to 400. I then wet the wood just to be able to raise the grain and then sanded it to 600. Having a bit of an organization of my sandpaper clearly. I love the grain in that wood. I think it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Very, very striking grain. Then gave it a coat of tongue oil. I've now decided that actually I did this the wrong way around. I should have sharpened first and then put tongue oil on. I'm not sure it makes a huge amount of difference, but I ended up putting more tongue oil on once I'd sharpened it anyway. So I put a primary sort of second bevel onto it using that sanding wheel actually, and then went from a very coarse grit up through 180, 600, 1000, 3000 wet stones. I think I was on FaceTime with my mum at this point. Having to sharpen flat blades purely from a whetstone where you've got a bit of a thickness on the edge, it does take a while. Clearly I've decided I've managed to get an edge on it. And then stepping through the stages. And stropping with a medium and then a fine compound, checking whether it cuts, and it seems to. And then giving it a final coat of tongue oil. And that's it. The first original garden knife. It's only a dinky one. I actually have massive hands, so it's not quite as small as that looks. The blade is about six centimeters long so two and a half inches and it just fits really beautifully in the palm of the hand so it should be a very useful knife thank you very much for watching if you'd like to see more content please subscribe if you like the video please like it and if you have any comments or feedback or suggestions please leave them in the comment below it's always deeply appreciated thank you very much bye bye